Hello everyone. My name is Chani Vitharan, Assistant Professor from the University of Connecticut. So my title is Big Imagery in Action, the first Pan-Arctic Ice Wedge Polygon Map. This is a research uh, of multiple institutions, including Yukon, Woodwell, and CSA Arctic Data Center. So we know that Arctic is undergoing rapid changes due to permafrost thaw. The existing monitoring approaches are insufficient to do pan-Arctic scale tracking and observation of these rapid changes happening due to climate change. So we need new approaches, advanced approaches, not only give local ch scale changes, but also regional to pan-Arctic scale. So let's take an example, this transformation of low-centered ice wedge polygons into high-centered ice wedge polygons in the, especially in the Arctic permafrost tundra region. So on your left-hand side, you see low-centered ice wedge polygons over time, maybe less than a decade, transform into high-centered uh, structures in which we have increased hydrological connectivity and increased lateral connectivity impacting multiple earth processes in the Arctic. So in addition to many of the, the impacts happening in the Arctic due to permafrost thaw and the disturbances, it's causing serious threats to human built infrastructure as well, from residential to commercial to industrial. The economic risk is high and there are so many wake up calls coming from multiple ends the repercussions of uh, permafrost thaw and its impacts on human built environment so everything is suggesting that we need data not only local scale but pan arctic scale and because to close the gaps in our spatially and temporal patchy understanding of these disturbance processes and consequences. So I purposely selected this article from Philippe. It's a review article that did a nice job condensing the Earth observation, especially using uh, satellite sensors to observe, track, predict, and synthesize and visualize changes and landforms and uh, also human built features in the arctic satellites can play a main so from the same study i pulled out these uh, two figures these clearly uh, indicate that there is a spike in satellite based studies over the last decade especially for land surface uh, feature mapping on the other hand many of the studies are using uh, medium to coast resolution satellite data uh, happen at pan-arctic to regional scale but only very few focused on uh, pan-arctic scale and based on high resolution data so it, it suggests there is there is a clear gap using high spatial resolution data in pan-arctic to regional scale studies so anyways we have a lot of data coming from different satellite sensors close to medium to high resolution that are capable of mapping the, the disturbances the landform the infrastructure and many other features given the amount of data we need better algorithms that can handle the data volumes ideally this big data problem to run these algorithms we need uh, advanced computing resources when we combine these three ingredients we can create the science ready products benefiting multiple stakeholders to combine everything together so the cyber infrastructure the pipeline the data the users share and and visualize so we need science gateways so the bigger goal of our mother project is that's the permafrost discovery gateway you can visit this website and see what we are doing and how we build this science gateway to bring people data and computing and algorithms together so 
In my talk, I focus on mainly data creation aspects of the permafrost discovery gateway using high resolution Maxa data and do automated analysis to create science ready products. So one of the key feature we see in the, uh, especially in the, the permafrost tundra region is that ice age polygon. That's the most widespread land form in that region and it's a critical player in, in this permafrost tundra system controlling the hydrology, the vegetation dynamics and, and many other processes. We largely unknown the, the distribution of these uh, ice age polygons and their conditions especially in the tundra region so we need better data and we need better maps uh, explaining their conditions since these are micro topographic features what we really need that very high spatial resolution satellite data in this example you see world view two images from north slope of alaska and banks island uh, canada so i zoomed in so you see we can easily detect, delineate, and, and classify ice age polygons and surrounding uh, landform features at 0.5 meter resolution. So if I pull out different types of tundra types and pertaining or the corresponding uh, the uh, samples for those regions based on commercial satellite imagery, you see the heterogeneity is very high, but yet we can identify these features accurately and delineate these uh, micro topography using commercial satellite imagery. So do we have the data? Yes, we do have the data. Now on your right hand you can, side, you can see the distribution of MAXA satellite imagery acquired since 2000 and uh, left hand side you see uh, how the the image acquisition exploded since uh, 2011 enabling panarctic image coverage petabytes of data do we have the access to data yes as nsf funded researchers we have the access to this big data set now the so we need better algorithms, we need computer resources to build an operational mapping pipeline. That's the main task we did. We created MAPLE that transforms large amount of commercial satellite imagery into science ready product. It is a scalable, transferable uh, mapping pipeline. The main objective is that among many to create the first pan Arctic ice wedge polygon map. So this is a very high level summary of the MAPLE, the our mapping pipeline. So we have pre-processing modules, the analysis module and the post-processing modules. When we combine everything together, we can push in the data and using HPC resources, we can churn the data and convert into a tangible GIS ready uh, maps. So let's look at some of the very high level summaries. So we mapped a large amount of ice age polygons across the Arctic using huge number of uh, commercial satellite image scenes. This map shows a very high level summary millions of ice age polygons mapped across the Arctic. If I way zoom into one location, this is the outcome. So we mapped a considerable amount of ice age polygons across the Arctic. So we know individual ice age polygons, their size, their geometry and, and their arrangement and their relationship to the surrounding. So we believe that this kind of uh, ice age polygon map can close the information gap existed for many years and it could answer multiple science questions and of course understand under increase our fundamental understanding about the, the thaw process because we have uh, information at very fine detail for huge amount of ice wedge polygons that exist in the uh, Arctic. Let me show you the timeline of this uh, the maple development. So by this year, we were able to release the first version of 
create the first version of ISH polygon map, it needs further improvements. Our goal is to adapt this pipeline for other features as well, like infrastructure and the those slums. From there, I conclude my presentation. I would like to thank all the collaborators and funding agencies. Thank you.